Uber, Lyft, Airbnb, Palantir, Slack, some of the largest private companies in tech may in fact go public this year. So could this be a record $100 billion year for IPOs? Bob Pisani's back with us at Post 9. That would be quite a number. We've never done it. We got close to 99, close in 2000. We'll see if it happens here. The IPO observers, they're optimistic about 2019, and there is some justification for the optimism. There's an outside chance 2019 could be the all-time record, passing even those legendary 99 and 2000 years. But for that to happen, a lot of things have to go perfectly. First, no more government shutdowns. Second, market conditions that exhibit very low volatility. And most importantly, a public appetite to buy very large IPOs at potentially very inflated prices. Renaissance Capital estimates there are at least 226 private companies looking to go public in 2019. That's a lot. Market value, close to $700 billion that could translate into north of $100 billion raised for the full year in the IPO market. $100 billion raised in a single year, never been realized. The closest we came was 1999, 2000. That represented the height of the dot-com IPO boom when just shy of $100 billion was raised. For 2019, those 226 companies might include 119 companies that would be classified as unicorns. Those are valuations over $1 billion, which are the bulk of the valuations out there, and includes potentially well-known names like Uber and WeWork and Lyft, you see here, Airbnb as well. Uh, this is the good news. Uh, the bad news, it's not clear who's going to buy all this stuff. The constituency for IPOs is a lot smaller than it was in 2000. A survey out just today from BDO notes that if the price is not right, survey participants made it clear there were alternatives to going public. In fact, an IPO seems to be fairly far down on the list of alternatives for exit strategies. Many, it seems, believe that tech companies will merge with another company or remain private over going public. And that's you know, certainly an alternative that's out there. So the way I look at it, lots of IPOs transcend into lots of choices for IPO buyers. And that tells me there's going to be some pressure on the pricing for these companies out there. It's going to be very interesting to see what well, happens. Well, the criticism has been criticism being used broadly, but that many of them have, have stayed private through their biggest growth periods, not right. allowing the public to actually be able to benefit or participate in that enormous growth. Yeah, rate. the earnings. I, I think the big growth premium in most of these major companies has passed. And that's one of the depressing things about watching yeah, but people the people are still going to line up to buy Uber. Come on. They're going to line up to buy Uber. They might line up to buy Uber, but there's, remember, I, I mentioned 226 potential companies out yeah. there. Yes, an Uber, yes, and a, maybe an Airbnb that's out there. And even then, it's going to depend on the valuation that, that they're getting. Nobody's going to give these people a pass just because the name uh, is Uber and just because uh, you know, SoftBank is behind them or anybody else is behind them. I, I think it's going to be the IPO buyers, I mean the buyers, have exhibited a lot of discipline in the last year and been willing to pass or let stocks down on big names if they think the valuation isn't there. And it's going to be tough, I think. When you see comparisons to 2000 and 1999 in terms of how, how much issuance could be, you know, coming to yeah. the public market, it begs the question, are we at a market top? I don't know if we're at a market top. I think that this is the year when everybody, last year was the year when everybody realized we are sitting on uh, investments in these companies, private in investments in these companies that are north of 10 years in some cases. The, the models for these private investment companies are not based on staying in companies for, for 10 years. They were supposed to get out sooner. They haven't been able to. There has been a, a good reason for them to stay quiet with all the market turmoil. And they realize that they've got to figure out an exit strategy. Now, I think, David, this is your field. I think a large, I, I think a significant percentage may opt for an M&A route if that's available.